Well, we can't say we haven't had time to prepare for it, can we? The 24th of December, Christmas Eve, is finally here. I wonder if you've done all your wrapping. By the way, if you're one of those people who does all of their wrapping for their Christmas presents um, a year ahead in January or something, then I, I am both frightened of you and envy you. Uh, I haven't quite finished, uh, but I don't want to give you the impression that I do the lion's share of the wrapping. That undoubtedly falls uh, to my wife. But let me ask you a question. Uh, tomorrow, why is it that you're giving presents? Why will the land tomorrow be filled with the ripping and wrenching of paper as people give and receive gifts? Well, I've been thinking, here are some bad reasons. We give presents, this is my bad reason, because other people will give me presents. Because the giving of gifts is a socially received norm and I like to conform. Or here's another one. I give presents to make people love me. I buy them such nice things that I hope they will love the things I give and therefore love me. No, I think the, the best reason to give presents is because you love the person you're giving the gift to and that gift is an expression of your love. And we don't give to get something else. We give because we love. We give like this because this is how God gave to us. I love how Mathis puts it. Uh, the deepest significance of Christmas isn't just that Jesus came to save us, but the, that he is who he is. The greatest treasure isn't that the Magi, what the Magi brought, but the one held in Mary's arms. The surpassing value of Christmas isn't finally knowing ourselves to be saved, but knowing the Jesus who saves us. Christmas isn't all about what we get, rescue. It is about relationship with Jesus. I think the way Mathis puts it is great. Uh, I like the way the Apostle John puts it even more in uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 12 of his gospel. He says this, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Being sons and daughters of the living God, knowing Jesus as our brother, that's the best gift this Christmas. It's the height of our privilege as God's people. It's the foundation of your and my relationship. We are brothers and sisters because God has adopted us into his family. And there are all kinds of beautiful things that flow from that adoption. We get to call the creator of the universe dad. We get one another. Uh, you are a gift to me from God who he is using to encourage me, to push me on, to spur me, to become more and more like my heavenly father. He gives us his Holy Spirit, the spirit of Jesus, to live in us and to guide us and to make us more and more like Jesus. We become inheritors of the family fortune and increasingly we take on the family's view of the world. All of these things these gifts come to us in the person of Jesus. We can't have them apart from him. Uh, they are benefits which flow from relationship with him. And Jesus comes as an expression of God's love. And that's why we give each other presents tomorrow. We love because he first loved us. Well, well done for making it to the end of these reflections. It's been lovely uh, to journey with you towards Christmas Day and I hope to a deeper appreciation and a deeper love for our Lord Jesus. There is rather a good little epilogue uh, in the in the book, the last one. Uh, do please find time to read that about why it's such good news that the man Jesus Christ <coughs> is the ruling and reigning king ascended to the Father's right, side, uh, right hand side. But all that remains for me is to say thank you and to wish you a very, very happy Christmas.